Hi, 7th graders, Mr. Pistel here. Today I'm going to be jumping around Chapter 1 of Rock Transformations, attempting to finish it. So I'm going to start with this video. And remember the next time that you look at a valley, just think about how the river cut through the rock layers. All right, All right for, the for the last, last bit of the class, class, we're going to start on our next project. Who remember to bring their rock samples that they collected during break with them? Wonderful, let's bring them on out. I'll be glad not to lug this thing around anymore. I just wanted to make sure it was big enough. I think it's big enough. Talk to the person next to you and share your observations. We miss the pre-quarantine days. Oh wow, your rock has a lot of really shiny grains. Mine doesn't have that. Yeah, I can see that too. You also have a lot of very fine sized grains. Where'd you find it? The Great Plains, back home in Nebraska. Here's a picture of the hill where I found it. Cell phones in class? Uh -huh. Where's the hill? That's it, right there. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty. Where's your rock from? Oh, I got it while hiking the Rockies in Colorado. And I found it right about here. Wow. OK, now I see why my hill didn't seem so tall to you. <laughs> All right, report back. What did your groups discover about their samples? Some of the rocks are a lighter color, while some are dark. I noticed mine had a lot of light and dark colors in it. Any ideas why we might be seeing multiple colors in one rock? Yes, Nadir. Well, rocks are made up of one or more minerals, so multiple colors probably means it's made up of different minerals. Indeed. Indeed. Nadir actually wants to tell a lot about the formation a rock comes from by finding out what minerals make it up. Yes, Corey. How can they tell what minerals make it up? That's a great question, and that's what we're going to investigate in our next project. Everyone bag and label their rocks and put them in that box on their way out. <laughs> I'm going to analyze each of your samples to get data about their mineral composition. And at the next class, we will review the data sets and pick a few to investigate further. Maybe the table. You're probably right. I've analyzed your rock samples, and I have them up here for you all to pick up after class. All the rocks were from different locations, but two of them had a surprisingly similar composition of minerals. Hey, those are ours. How can they be similar? It looks so different. Even though these two rocks were from 200 miles apart and from totally different areas, they have almost the same amount and types of minerals. Can anybody tell me how this could be possible? Uh, maybe after the rock formed, something separated them. Yes, Corey. Or maybe the rocks formed separately, and then the minerals from the older rock became a part of the younger rock? Great idea. Mm, but which one of us is right? Well, that's for you all to figure out. For your next project, I want all of you to investigate how a formation from the Rocky Mountains and one from the Great Plains can appear so different, but have similar mineral compositions. And I'll be happy to give this back to you, Corey. <laughs> All right, so basically we're trying to figure out um, how a rock from the Rocky Mountains and, the Rocky fr and a rock from the Great Plains could have similar composition. Um, and I'll repeat the claims that the students said. First claim is they formed as one rock formation and then something separated them. And then the other claim is one rock formed before the other. Then the, mineral then the minerals from the older rock became part of the younger rock. I'm going to jump here. Not that. That is a very cool rock formation. OK. I'm just going to review a little bit about the different types of rocks right now. Um, they're very concerned with sedimentary rock and igneous rock in this lesson. So I'll review that sedimentary rock is the rock formed when sediment is pressed and glued together. Actually, Amplify uses Jolly Ranchers, 
Um, we did Starburst in class, but the Jolly Ranchers are all in school. And I don't expect you to go out and get a bunch of Jolly Ranchers. And these are words that I've mentioned, but I haven't explained too much. So in order to create sedimentary rock, um, the sediment, which is little pieces of sand or pebbles, are compacted and cemented. So compacted mean like pressed together, cemented with enough, with enough pressure, um, pebbles and sand can cement together into a rock. And let's also look at magma cooling, which is something else. This is magma cooling into igneous rock. I guess it's cooled on the sides here. And actually you can walk on cooled magma, which in some cases looks like this. This is probably Hawaii, I'm guessing. And she's poking some of the non-solidified magma with a stick. Uh, basalt is one kind of rock that can form at Earth's surface when magma cools. And this is a different, I, actually this is, never mind, this is also basalt. But it's cooling in the air, not the, not the water. So igneous rock forms when magma cools and becomes solid. I'm going to go over that later. Let me keep jumping. Okay, this is where I want you guys to do your work in 1.5, so we can finish chapter one today. Um, the warm up for 1.5 is basically just matching which one of these is igneous and which one is sedimentary. So you can like drag this here or here. Pretty easy, considering these definitions and explanations are really, really long. So that, that shouldn't be too hard. <clears throat> Skip two. Okay, because I, I want to spend the majority of the time thinking about this uh, Great Plains versus Rocky Mountains. So we have a letter from that professor of geology. So she says, we're continuing our, our investigation of how the rock formations in the Great Plains and Rocky Mountains formed. I'm sending you some observations of both regions. These were collected by student geologists in the field. They made observations of both of the rock samples and the landscape. I'd like you to sort through these observations and decide which are worth keeping and which are not detailed enough and therefore do not provide strong enough evidence. We look forward to your response. So some evidence is more important than other evidence. Um, so I have attached, I would give you the cards, but again, they're at the school, but the cards are here. If you have a printer, you could print them out, but you don't have to. So we have eight cards. Um, this is the rock from the Rocky Mountains, this pink and black one. And this is the rock from the Great Plains. Um, so we have evidence about the small scale and the large scale for these places. And there's a lot of evidence. Um, the first thing you have to do is which you have to decide is which piece, which evidence cards are most important and which don't you really care about all that much. And whenever you look at a rock, you can follow some of these guidelines. So when you look at a rock, how many colors are there? How, how many different colors of grains are there? The size of the grain, the shape of the grain. Are the grains stuck together to look like puzzle pieces? What is the texture? How hard is it? Or is it crumbly? Are there fossils in it? That would be sedimentary rock. Are there bubbles in it? That would be igneous rock. So um, just take a look at the evidence cards and decide which ones are helpful and which ones are not helpful. In part four, you basically have to decide which rock is sedimentary 
and which rock is igneous. So you're going to use some of the evidence cards, hopefully. So you have a 50-50 shot of getting this right. And I do want you to do part five. So some of the evidence cards are here. And this is not easy, but how did the rock of the Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains form? Um, which claim do you think is more likely at this point? Um, later on, we're going to revisit this. Why can we eliminate the claim you selected? So you're, trying, you're picking the one that you're going to eliminate here. And what do we still need to know in order to determine why the two rock formations look different but have such similar minerals? So not the easiest, but this is just the first step of figuring out this mystery of the Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains. All right, thanks for visiting, guys, and stay safe out there.